Over the course of his 94 years, George H.W. Bush was a decorated fighter pilot, a star ball player, a successful businessman, a congressman, an ambassador, an envoy, a CIA director, a vice president, and a president of the United States. You might not expect that extraordinary level of ambition and achievement to be accompanied by such humility and decency. But President Bush had both right until the end. Harry Smith has our Sunday closer. Poppy Bush was cut from different cloth. He was made of a material we rarely see nowadays. Shot down over the Pacific in World War II, Bush's lifelong regret was losing two men on that mission. Others would want to make him a hero, but Bush was then and forever a person who would prefer to deflect praise than to bask in it. After doing his bit, as he would say, he and Barbara fled patrician Greenwich, Connecticut, and the shadow of his prominent father to find their destiny in the dusty, oil-rich Permian Basin of Texas. Bush was the quintessential good guy, community and service-minded, a straight arrow, the kind of guy you'd want as your congressman, and he became one. His career in politics was pockmarked by several failed campaigns, but he was always quick to rejoin the fray and to take jobs which seem not to be springboards to something better. Hey, we gotta go to work. Bush was ambitious, but he was also imbued with that old school American value of paying your dues. Service and hard work were their own rewards. That, he felt, should be resume enough for someone who aspired to be president. For a better America, for an endless enduring dream and a thousand points of light, Tooting his own horn was an act he wasn't good at, nor did he want to be. America's success in the first Gulf War catapulted his approval ratings to record highs. But as the economy faltered, Bush was blamed for its failure. The public perception that he was out of touch, fueled in part by the media's infatuation with Bill Clinton, was unfair. He was a man with unfinished business, but out of a job. Yet bitterness or any impulse to criticize a successor were out of bounds as far as he was concerned. Over the years, many would tell him how much he was missed, words he appreciated, but wasn't hungry for. Seems like people like him don't come around much anymore. Harry, it seems we've heard hundreds of stories of the last couple of days about President Bush's humanity. Mm -hmm. And you found it even as you covered him as president. Spent a lot of time covering him. And we were doing an interview with him in Dearborn, Michigan, where my in-laws lived. And I said, do you want to come over and meet the president? So before the interview starts, my in-laws come in, uh, Mr. President, Ralph and Joyce Kuzlitz. My father-in-law had served in World War II, two tours of duty in the South Pacific in the Marine Corps, imagine. And they start to talk, and I see my father-in-law's legs wobbling. And I said, Mr. President, Ralph was with you in the South Pacific. And the president turns on a dime. What division were you in, Ralph? And then they start up this conversation. I have to drag him away to do the interview on television. When it's over, there's Marlon Fistwater. Mr. President, we got to go. He makes a beeline for my in-laws. Ralph, Joyce, mm. so nice to meet you. Starts talking to him again. And <laughs> this was just the most, he would rather have done that than be on the campaign trail. Couldn't get him out of the room. Nope. And as John Meacham reminded us, the president is rolling his eyes right now as we lavish praise on him. Move too along. Much. Move Way along. Too much. Way Thanks, too much. Harry. Great piece. Appreciate it. Good to sure. see you.